My name is Andrew Hanna. I have directed such movies as the zombie drama The Last Ones, a exploitation film called Borderland. I almost forgot the name of my own movie. A new film is called The Empty Space. It's a cosmic sci-fi horror film that's about my own personal dealings with anxiety and depression. It's obviously a horror film, so certain liberties have been taken. And this is the final week that it is playing in the Sacramento Horror Film Festival until November 2nd. If you can buy tickets by following the link in my social medias. And you can watch it from anywhere in the United States because this year it's digital. So yeah, please buy a ticket, watch it, tell us what you think. And we are also playing at the American Horrors Film Festival, which should be happening on Halloween Day, which is perfect, uh, in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. So if you're out there, please go give it a watch. I'd like to welcome you to The Bomb Squad, a podcast where we talk about movies that were overlooked or just generally hated by the audiences and critics, and we try to find the good in them. I'm joined, as always, by my best friend, Joshua Epp, and we're talking about Jumper. The Hayden Christensen hit? I don't know. Was it a hit? I feel like it wasn't. I wasn't. No, it was supposed to actually be the beginning of like a trilogy and it did not do well enough to merit a trilogy. And let me just add that this week, this is our fifth episode and every fifth episode we let Josh pick and wow, what a mistake that already is. <laughs> Jumper, for anyone who doesn't know, is based on a YA book. It stars Hayden Christensen and Rachel Bilson and Billie Eilish? No, it's not Billie Eilish. <laughs> uh, Billie Billy Eilish. Elliot. Billy no, Elliot. It, what's his name? No, Billy Jamie Elliot. Bell? Jamie Bell, yeah. Um, Jamie Bell. And it's about a guy who can teleport. Also, the description says a teenager with teleportation abilities suddenly finds himself in the middle of an ancient war between those like him and their sworn annihilators. And let me just say... He is not a teenager. He's like, he's like a college age kid. So even the company who made this movie didn't watch the movie that they made because they put. Yeah. This is the official synopsis. It does start when he's a teenager, but it's not about a teenager because they start off as teens, and it's it's the first time the character David realizes that he has teleportation devices and the so the main character is played by Hayden Christensen and Rachel Bilson and the two teens that they got look nothing like <laughs> either character just, like not even a little bit they also do one of my and Josh's favorite tropes which is the serial killer bully <laughs> like at the very beginning David has a crush on the girl who's going to be played by Rachel Bilson Millie he has a crush on Millie, so he gives her, he has like a, a snow globe for her, and he gives it to her, and then the bully like takes it away, and he's like, ha ha. He, he does do that, that, that bully thing in movies where he makes fun of him for the snow globe, but there's nothing to really make fun of, so he's just like, ha, look at this dorky thing. It's like, yeah, yeah it's a gift for a girl. <laughs> and that's what I'm normal. talking about, the serial killer bully. <laughs> Because in movies, I mean, bullies exist, obviously, but in movies, like, they're always amped up to a hundred. So, yeah, so he throws a snow globe out, and then David goes to pick it up, and he falls into the ice, into the lake. That's when he figures out he can teleport, so he teleports out of it. He goes to the library. He goes to the library. Because it's, like, his safe spot, and then he keeps returning back there, but they don't ever really say it. It just kind of, he just shows up there. Okay, but let me ask you a question. Is the dad abusive? Because they kind of make it seem like he is abusive, but then um, later he's like, right. But apparently in the book, uh, the reason he teleports for the first time is his dad is just beating the shit out of him, and then he teleports to the library. So in the book, he's like overtly like, it's like a domestic abuse. And the, the mom's not, there's no secret society in the book. The mom just left because the husband was so abusive. Like, oh, see, because in the movie does it complete. In the movie, it almost seems like when the mom left, the dad gave up, and now he's just a drunk who yes, doesn't really show yeah. attention to David, but he's not like, bad it's, but then uh, it's, but it's michael rooker it's michael rooker oh, guardians of does, the galaxy does a good job i mean yeah michael rooker rocks but michael rooker rocks but um 
I got lost in my own amazing you're, joke. You're not, you're not going to cut that, but you should. <laughs> I'm not. But okay, so David teleports, and so eventually he runs away, and he um, he leaves the snow globe for Millie. The funniest part to me in the beginning was when they shoot to the title sequence, which my movie, the last one, does this. You always want like something memorable to happen before like it just, before the title like just hits you. And in this one, he's going to a hotel, and then the guy goes, no funny stuff. And then he goes, yeah, no funny stuff. And then he goes, jumper. No worries, stuff. It does the big swoop, like it's a real big <laughs> title card. You're like, what is this? It was just nothing so funny. Is happening. Because it was like such a nothing <laughs> line. And this was definitely before the big Marvel, like... Yeah, this was 2008. of, like, everything. Right. They would never use it in a way where you're like, oh, this is clever. You're like, oh, wow, he actually used his power to rob a bank and then just live, like, this life. Is that he never, like, okay, he's going to jump to Egypt. He doesn't jump to, like, a part of Egypt where he can, like, go get some food or, like, just explore the city. He always jumps to the top of the most famous <laughs> landmark. <laughs> like, early on, it's like, wow... That you would need a miracle to save these people during this monsoon. And he just like looks at the TV and like shrugs. Thinks he's good, but it doesn't even occur to him. The reason he goes back home, because he had been kind of inclined to not ever see his home life again, is that he runs into Samuel Jackson. Samuel Jackson is part of this cult that hunts jumpers, because there's a bunch of them. And, uh, and they're a religious cult, and their, their motivation is that God should be the only one who has powers. Only God should have the power to be all places at all times. Like, yeah, basically Samuel Jackson, who we should note has bleached white hair in this. Like, <laughs> yeah, like it's just he such is... a weird... Like the, like, the cult is super powerful, but in a way that doesn't really work for the movie, you know? And the cult has, like, these... They have these, like, they're sticks that shoot out electricity hooks, and they keep the jumpers from jumping because they're, like shocks them every few seconds so they can concentrate to jump in this movie to teleport you have to be able to focus on a place you've been or a place you've seen so like david could look at a picture of like new york and get there it's kind of hard to jump with a thousand volts of electricity passing through your brain huh the whole like the whole time we see everyone all the other bad guys they're like wearing suits they have their sticks hidden in like a briefcase and it's like oh they're trying to stay on the down low because it's a secret cult society and then you're the leader of said society is like Samuel Jackson with the gray, like with the silver hair. <laughs> and even he has a goatee and parts of the goatee are the same like platinum silver color. <laughs> yeah. They go and attack David and David has to like lay low for a few days. So he goes home to see Rachel Bilson. And Rachel Bilson's character is that she wanted to travel, but she's stuck at a barn as a bartender so he's like let's go to rome this is where the movie starts to speed up in a way where you're like oh you guys only had like a rough draft you didn't bother to finish <laughs> right. it because he goes within literally hours of them landing in rome they have like tracked him to the like the coliseum that he broke into and like staged like an attack again like it's such a weird like Oh, it, it would almost make more sense if the cult was like, oh, they were everywhere, so no matter where you went, eventually they'd catch up to you. But they catch up to him so quickly and so, like, effectively. Well, and see, that's... a little bit like, oh, this movie's just trying to rush you, like, through everything. Every line in Jamie Bell's scene when he meets him in the Coliseum was just, like, for the trailer. Because <laughs> yeah, Jamie like, Bell tells 100%. him, like... 100%. Did you think you were the only one? What to the war? Who are these people? Paladins. Paladins kill jumpers. I kill paladins. Class dismissed. Because he's been hunting Roland, who's Samuel Jackson. Jamie Bell is just so much more interesting than David. <laughs> it's like if you got rid of the Rachel Bilson character and you made Jamie Bell into the love interest, that would have worked a lot better because they have like a. And Jamie Bell does kind of carry his scenes because you do like when they team up later and they're kind of this like group. But, but it is almost unearned because within within minutes they are teamed up and then he tells him his tragic backstory that the paladins also killed Jamie Bell's parents, you know? Um, 
And it's just very like rushed too. And and I think that's kind yeah. of a problem with both both him and Rachel Bilson is they're both like, Hey Hayden Christensen, you're we should like we should work together, blah blah blah. But in it, this really unearned way, it's like we just met. Like when Rachel Bilson near the end is like, Oh well, I'm mad at him, but I do still love him. It's like you've spent less than twenty four hours with this person. There's no reason <laughs> you would be interested and in them. It would have you know? all again, it would have made sense if um they had been best friends in elementary school like okay so they go to the coliseum they get attacked and then he's like come with me we got to get out of here and she's like david what's going on he's like nothing which again like just say security beat the hell out of you yeah he's he's so dodgy because he's like nothing happened and then he gets arrested and then they're like there's a man's body missing in there and she's just like David, huh? <laughs> like, like she's so not catching on to how like sketchy this guy is yeah. until way too late. To be fair, if I was a girl and I, my options were to be with Hayden Christensen, who might be a serial killer in Rome, <laughs> or to go back and be a bartender, I think I, would, I mean, I would take, I would at least wait a day <laughs> to see. Well, I, I almost thought the way the way, <laughs> even if he's boring as hell. And and they could have even done this because they almost want to do it, but then they just rush it. Is that like, well, if they had spent like two months in Rome or something to where it's like, oh man, she's really connected to him because he's this great guy and they like caught up and everything. And then they're found out because those guys like finally track them down, that kind of thing. It, w- it would almost make more sense as to why she feels so strongly towards him versus... Oh, this weird kid gave me a snow globe <laughs> that I didn't talk to, then died, then flew me to Rome, then clearly got arrested for what might have been murder, and then had a backpack full of money. The fact that she he shows her a bag of money, even if she infers he's a criminal, still doesn't answer any of his questions. I mean, I think moral questions aside, though, if you were, like, hanging out with someone and you realized they had a backpack full of hundreds of thousands of dollars... Even if you didn't think, oh, this is bad, you'd be like, oh, this is dangerous. This person is in some sort of danger to right, have this right. much money or is in some sort of dangerous connection. Right. What happens after that? After he says bye um, to Rachel Wilson? I know, he, like, I know that he she finds... gets on the plane. He goes... Well, I, I don't remember exactly what the Jamie Bell thing... I also watched this two days ago, so I should, but... I think um, he goes back to Jamie Bell's Egyptian... Yeah, he's like, oh, he's going to kill everyone. Like, Roland's going to kill everyone you love. That's the price of being a jumper. Roland, uh, Samuel Jackson visits the dad, and the dad tells him, I'm not going to tell you anything, is that I don't know why Hayden Christensen goes back to see Jamie Bell for the second time. Because for the whole movie, his, his motivation is to run away from everything. But it's like he, like he needed to find out that Roland was going to kill his family and his friends. But they didn't know how to do that. So they just cut to him already in Jamie Bell's, in Jamie Bell's room. Yeah, I think it's just more like, hey, what's what's going on, other jumper? Right, because it's just a scene where Jamie Bell's, like, playing video games. Yeah, and then he and just he's, like, up. kind of ignoring him. He's like, hey, tell me about these guys. And he's like, no. And then he, then he goes home. He finds his dad dead. Because he, uh, that's why he goes, okay. Oh my god, this movie. Um, because he's in the police precinct. They are struggling. <laughs> he's in the police precinct and his mom shows up. Like, it's so weird to introduce the mom and introduce that she is yeah. part of the paladrones and then just not really have her be. It's paladin. And she's like, hey, you need to get out of here. Here's the keys. And then he tries to chase his mom, but he gets comically stuck in the door with the chair that he's handcuffed to. <laughs> <laughs> and so then it cuts to him leaving and that's why he goes to see Jamie Bell because he's like I think my mom is one of those paladrones or whatever they're called the cult leaders so who are they and then that's when Jamie Bell's like oh they're gonna kill your family and friends and he says oh we have to we have to team up and when they're together it comes across a lot more that, like there's a scene where they're walking and Jimmy Bell or and Kane Christensen's like why are you walking <laughs> And he's like, I like walking. This flawless Irish accent is presented by Andrew Hanna. I like, I, I like walking for change. I like walking. And it just, like that scene shows more characteristic for David than the whole beginning of the movie. 
<laughs> yeah, you know, it's it, that's a good. I mean, that's a good like back and forth scene. It's one of the strongest parts of the movie too. Yeah, it and also there's... has the the trailer built into it where he steals a car to jump around in just for for kicks. You Which know? is one of my favorite scenes. Like them jumping the car was cool. And, but yeah, that like I do like that the film takes its time to show how cool and fun the jumper thing is, despite the fact that they're now in the middle of a war. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's the problem. Structurally, this doesn't work, but just for the, the, the scenes of fun jumping and Jamie Bell being kind of an asshole to him and him being an asshole back, like, actually really does kind of, like, get you through it. Or Samuel Jackson, like, shoots his hook and grabs Rachel Bilson and pulls her back. I'm putting myself in her shoes. If this guy came back, he took me to Rome, got arrested by the police after visibly being accosted, or, and then he left me, and then I came back and was immediately attacked by some kind of secret police. And then he came back and jumped me to a random place. I wouldn't be like, oh, I was wrong about you. I'd be like, I'm more right about you than ever before. <laughs> yeah, and you, I have so you, many more questions. my life. This actually is, though, this is the only good fight action scene in the movie. Well, it's not even that good, but... The only action scene in the movie approaching good because it's the one. I would where, say uh, they're not that bad. They're just like heavily. They're, they're just very, real short. There's only so much you could do, but this one has. It's all carried by Jamie Bell. I don't even think Hayden Christensen does anything, but because it's Jamie Bell attacking them with a flamethrower. He likes, and then he gets them outside. He throws a bus. Yeah. at Sam Jackson. And keep yeah. in mind, this is, this is directed by Doug Liman. He made Jumper, Mister and Mrs. Smith, Edge of Tomorrow. So he's pretty hit and mid, like Edge of Tomorrow. And he made Edge of Tomorrow yeah. one of the best action movies. Which is weird, because I was going to say, like, between... I, I never liked the shaky camness of Born Identity. It's less that the action scenes are bad. It's just that they're a product of their time. And, and it leads to another action scene, because Jamie Bell, like, triggers the bomb that he's going to send to those guys so he can kill them. And him and Hayden Christensen fight across the world. Like, they keep jumping to different locations. Yeah, I did enjoy that. That, that was the biggest, like, montage scene. Although that, that is a scene, too, where you could tell that for shooting, they had a couple locations, <laughs> and then the rest are just, like, there's one part where they're on a beach, and, like, the Dubai, like, towers are just badly photoshopped in the <laughs> background. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. All right, I mean, know, I, it's I do appreciate, like, they clearly went to Rome, and they went to, uh, I think they go to Hong Kong, um, and they yes. went to a bunch of American cities. And again, like, this movie's rushing through the ending. And so Hayden Christensen eventually traps Jamie Bell, and he's, like, he, he takes the bomb, and then he goes... And save Rachel Bilson. And then he, like, um, he fights Samuel Jackson and he leaves him in a cave. And Samuel Jackson's like, told Are you gonna you kill me? And then he's like, I told you I was different. And then Samuel Jackson, like, gets to the edge of the cave and he realizes that he's, like, on a cliff of a mountain. And then he looks at the camera, like, That damn kid! And it's <laughs> yeah, like, the very, He, like, Boys will be boys. Yeah, he gives it the boys will be boys. And the problem is, is that he's part of a secret deadly cult who's killed children for the last 200 years or something. There's no, like, gray area with with Samuel Jackson. He is a murderer. <laughs> and he should yeah. be stopped. But that, that was definitely the, like, uh he, we want him to come back. Yeah, uh, which, which they you, also course, leave. Uh, they leave Jamie Bell. Yeah, he, like he leaves him in like this like voltage, like this like collapsed power lines, in war torn Chechnya, where there's just bullets flying everywhere, and it's very like. And then he's gonna die. Yeah, <laughs> he's gonna it, be executed. It leads from him leaving that guy dead, or to die essentially, and then it cuts to him. Fighting Samuel Jackson, and he goes, I told you I was different. It's like, well, you killed Jamie Bell. And he <laughs> he has saved you and your girlfriend on multiple occasions. <laughs> so I don't know exactly how different you are. Um, but yeah, so over... I'm. Oh, wait, we forgot to get to the best part in my favorite part of the movie. So then he goes <laughs> and visits his mom. And who answers the door? But baby Kristen Stewart... Who's, uh, uh, yeah, super young. Was this pre-Twilight? Oh, it was the same year that Twilight came out. 
but I think it was filmed way earlier. I don't know. Kristen Stewart plays the sister. But it is, I mean, it, this is, this whole scene is bad though, because she's not a character. Diane Lane's not a character. Like, right. because then she's like, why did you save me? She's like, I didn't save you. I gave you a head start. It's like, well, no, you clearly saved me. I'm giving you a head start, son. You have to get out of here. That yeah. was not a head start. That was a clear it's save. Just, it's just, it's such a bad, like, sequel hook moment. Like, yeah. it's just nothing, you know? But you know what? I'll take any sequel hook moment if it has Kristen Stewart. Um, if at the end of Iron Man, you know, instead of Samuel Jackson, it was Kristen Stewart, and she's like, I want you to join the Avengers, I would have been more on board. I guess we're just, we're just going to let that joke land. Yeah, just just let your <laughs> your obvious obsession linger. Um, on rewatch, I feel like um, I understand why this movie didn't do good. And why, yes, why people don't like it. I, I yeah, yeah, there's no reason Most to go watch movies, it. movies, I'm like, you should watch it if you get the opportunity. They are like better than you remember. This one's like, no, it's... It's what you expect. It's it's kind of what you remember. Although I will I will always defend. I think the reason we like Jumper is sometimes you like movies because the movies are good, obviously. But sometimes you like movies because you're like, oh, I wish that I had that power. And I feel like te teleportation is one of those powers where not everyone thinks about it that much. But I would almost rather teleport than fly. Because if you oh, fly, yeah. you have to put an effort. <laughs> if you're teleporting... You just go. I could teleport right now to the other end of this hallway. So it's just this bare bones movie that just kind of jumps from one place to the other, you know. And uh, and I feel like the same thing yeah. with Jumper, where it's like it, it jumps. It jump in Jumper. It jumpers. Did you get it? Was that a palindrome? It wasn't. A gonna, people are gonna listen to this one. Understand what that <laughs> term means? Still, people are gonna listen to this one and be like, "Oh, this is the last one. These guys are dumb." All right, this is, my name has been Andrew Hanna. If you would like to help us, like and subscribe, I guess. I don't know what we're going to be on. But also, mm -hmm. watch my movies on Amazon Prime, Roku, Steam, uh, the movie channel in Thailand, <laughs> and a bunch of other sites. If you ever see my name, if you're ever on a streaming site, search my name. And as long as it's not Netflix or Hulu, I'm probably on there. Uh, and watch my movies, give them a review. That'd be great. See you next week. Try not to jump there. What? <laughs>